let's take a look at this quote from Abraham Lincoln. We are not enemies, but friends. We must be, we must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. So that was said in the middle of the Civil War. That is a very good thing to remember at all times, I think. Great president. Uh, thank you for uh, welcoming me back uh, after a week. And I'll just say that I am 100% overjoyed to see everybody here. Uh, because mainly because um, we got a lot of work to do, <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna make a major revision of things, including exam one. So, are you guys sick of the skier problem yeah. yet? Yeah. You fine? <laughs> Good. Fine. All right. Well. We, we're going to talk a little bit about the skier problem. But the, th the thing about the skier problem is it's, it really is, you know, I didn't have a skier, but you always have stuff going down an incline plane. And it really is helpful to understand it. Now, I, right now, the, the state of affairs are our homework, shh, our homework grades are really, really badly behind. Okay, uh, we're, and it's it's me and the grader, and it's not really the grader, uh, but but it's mainly because of me and the situation that I've been in for the past week up in New York. So, uh, uh, so we're gonna make some changes. First of all, homework six, written homework six will be assigned, uh, but it's gonna be pre-graded. So I'm going to give everybody eights. See, see, now you're really clapping. But it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's my way of trying to streamline things and keep things rolling. And, you know, we got a lot of stuff to do, but I think we can do it. But what it's going to force us to do is rebuild the homework system um, in the next, sometime next week. Uh, so it, so I'm going to rebuild it in a way that it'll operate, it'll operate in a similar way. And, uh, but it'll be, you know, recalibrated. It'll come up with the same number of points at the end of the semester, but it'll probably be working a little bit differently for everybody. All right. So uh, that's my prelude or my preamble to how we're going to change exam two. And the main thing is because we're in such arrears with homework grades. And much as you now love the skier problem, uh, we still have uh, stuff to deal with. Uh, so what are we going to focus on? Well, we're going to focus on the stuff that you've covered. You've covered a good amount of work uh, and you're in, we're in chapter five now and we're going to uh, finish chapter five probably today uh, or Friday and dip a, forward into chapter six, and then that'll be on the exam next Monday. Uh, so everything that we finish this week, but it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah. This next Monday? Yeah, yeah. No, we're not moving it. We're We're changing it. Yeah, we're, we're, if you listen here, you'll see what my changes are. Right. So I'm going to, it's going to be a lot more multiple choice. In fact, it may all be Scantron. All right. Gee, I hope I have your vote in November. Gosh. I should run for mayor now. Mayor of UCF. Anyway, but you, you know, the thing is, uh, the thing about it is, what we're going to focus on are my annotations and highlights 
and the UCF version of the free textbook. Now, if you haven't dug into that one yet, if you're still using the, the generic one down in Texas, get into the, and there's a link in our homepage to the, uh, to the UCF version. You'll see all my annotations. And uh, for instance, here's one of them in this blue uh, circle. Uh, comment about uh, perpendicular and parallel components of the weight force. Uh, and I've been working hard on getting that all annotated up and commented up. So in addition to everything that you have done with Professor Schulte and with Dr. Dubé the past two lectures, uh, with Dr. Dubé, um, all those concepts and stuff and skills, uh, plus my annotations, uh, in the, in the various chapters that, uh, so up to, you know, most of chapter four and probably dipping into the beginning of chapter six uh, on Friday. Uh, so uh, get familiar with those annotations and I'll show you some examples of that. Also, I'm gonna put out a bunch of talking PDFs for you to, to study with. Dude, listen. Uh, I'll be putting up some talking PDFs uh, by way of in, for homework and other problems. So this will help you have a recorded uh, version of my remarks on some of the problems like the skier problem uh, that we've tackled the past week in my absence. All right. And so, you know, so because we haven't had any YouTubes, I didn't ask Professor Schulte or Dr. Dubé to record anything up. So. We haven't had any YouTubes that you can go back and study, but we'll have some talking PDFs that you can go back and study. A little bit shorter, but you know, hopefully that'll be helpful. And I think we're gonna do one today as well for, for the last task of the day. Um, you're gonna have the skier calculation. I'll just tell you straight out. Now that you hate the skier calculation, you're ready to be tested on it, okay? And uh, so uh, the thing about the skier calculation, we're going to encode the answer or the numeric answer only. Actually, I might put a directional uh, question in Scantron too, but we'll use uh, two or three Scantron items, you know, so like number 21, 22, and 23 to encode the numeric answer. And I have an example how to do that. We're going to do one quick in a second. Uh, and then, so, uh, so my, my hope is that if we change the exam to be in this manner, it'll be fair. It'll be more conceptual, okay? And, uh, but still cover the material and we'll have one good old skier calculation in there of some kind, okay? Uh, to just to re-verify all that. But we won't be grading your, your written problem on this exam, so. So that's, uh, and that'll speed things up for us because we got a lot of other written work to get greater and stuff. All right. Now, uh, questions. Uh, Ch Chelsea, do you still have a question? Is that pretty clear about what you were? Anybody else? Go ahead. How many questions? Uh, I don't know how many questions. It'll be 36 points. So probably it'll have to, See the the calculation. I don't. I, I the calculation. It'll probably be thirty six Scantron questions, you know, and so it's still going to be a thirty six point test, all right. But just you know, instead of having twelve written pro twelve points for written problems, we'll have an extra twelve points in the Scantron. So, another question. Yes. Yeah, it'll be, it'll, the multiple choice will look like that. But let me, t and I'm, I, you know what else? I may put some, uh, you know, the, the, on the written problems, it's not the calculation per se. I mean, the calculation is, is good, but that's the very last thing. But really the, the, the hard part of the, the written problems are the concepts. And so I can give you a diagram uh, you know, like a, a, ski, a skier, well, I've already got the skier diagram in there, but um, I, I could give you, um, you know, like the guy on the tightrope. The guy on the tightrope, that question 
I've asked in a huge number of midterms in physics 2053 and also 2048. I mean, everybody has to know how to do that. All right. Now, you won't have a written problem with that like I do in many midterms. But I might give you the diagram and then ask you questions about it that you answer in multiple choice. So, I, you know, I know you guys were happy about um, all Scantron for exam two, but you might not be after the exam because only in that, you know, it's, it, it's, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy. And another thing, and I, I made this annotation in, in the textbook, um, let's see, one of the problems, the, the, the problem that I, th I think Professor Schulte went over w with you, the, uh, the instructor, the professor pushing a lab cart and analyzing all the forces. Did you guys do that one? Yeah. Uh, that is a notorious kind of a problem that is used by faculty uh, in uh, PhD committees um, at the end of a grad student's uh, PhD thesis, they always defend their thesis, their dissertation. And once they've defended all that they've written in their dissertation, then usually or frequently um, the student may, the PhD candidate may be asked any question from physics one up to physics 2000. And what is that? Is that, it sounds like a, sounds like, so in, in a student's P, in a student's PhD defense, that kind of problem with the professor pushing the cart and what are the accelerations, what are the net forces and stuff. I have seen faculty that have done that to a grad student and at the end of the at the end of the question, you know, so the, the last, you know, like the, 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 the classic example, um, when I was coming up in grad school, this one professor, Professor Francis, he put a can of Pepsi up on the overhead projector and he said, okay, diagram the forces on this can. And so, the, you know, the, the PhD candidate, he was used to, you know, he was doing this very fancy quantum, solid state quantum uh, thesis. And he's used to all quantum mechanics stuff, you know, integrals and calculus out the wazoo. So asking him that question, you know, that by the time Professor Francis and the other instructors were done, that guy didn't know which way was up. But they still passed him. So it so the 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 point of the story is questions like that can be turned into a torture device for grad students. And so you guys, you know, now I'm not nasty in that way but I will challenge you and I, I probably won't challenge you with that one but some of the other questions that you will have will not be easy even though they're multiple choice okay they'll really strain your brain to, to think them through so don't uh, you know don't cheer me on that one yet you can cheer me later if you want all right what are the annotations and highlights look like that you want to focus on well here's an here's a example of a highlight just a yellow highlighter, uh, and it does it. It's nice. It works really nicely. Um, and this one is about the swimmer and the forces and stuff. And you know, this is about third law. And you can see it. And if you look in uh, my, and all my annotations and highlights are public, so you should be able to. Matter of fact, has anybody seen my annotations, my little blurbs and stuff? Okay. So if you've already done that, if somebody else, if you don't know how to do it, um, ask one of the people that just raised their hands or post a discussion. How do I get in there? Stuff I look at. Uh, now, here's an annotation. And uh, so this one's a, a little slight the skier problem. So let me get my cursor over here. All right, so here it highlights a little blurb of it. And then I type in some comments over here. All right, so those comments are me talking about this stuff. All right, and so I want you to study those and be familiar with them. And use them to think. And you may, you know, there may be four or five annotations that you read that I, I you know, I typed in a nice little paragraph there. Uh, I might not ask you about that paragraph, but if you've studied that and a few others, you might be able to answer two or three 
uh, multiple choice questions that force you to think with the thinking concepts that I have in the annotations. So they're very valuable. All right, clipper time. Let's do, um, let's do a very simple calculation and we'll, we'll bubble it in Scantron style, but we're gonna use clickers. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna, you're gonna select a question here. Let me get my cursor back over here. And you're gonna type in two letters, all right, to indicate um, one of the numerals in your answer. All right, so here we go. All right. Calculate the weight force of a 0 0.40 kilogram bag of Cheetos to the nearest 0.1. So go ahead and write that down and jot your, your, your answer down in your notebook. And then what I want you to do is um, select the whole number part of you. It's going to be something point something. All right, I'll just tell you that out straight. Okay, because we're practicing. Select the whole number part of your answer from these letters. So, and then hit the send key. So, for instance, if the weight force works out to 9.4, then you would choose uh, AE and then hit the send key. All right, so go ahead and do that. And let me look at the... So take a minute to do that. Let me look at you guys. Oops, which one am I down here? Uh, hey, students, AE is not the answer. I wouldn't use it as an example if it were. Don't type in three. You can't do this on a Scantron. So the way that you're going to do it on the Scantron is you're going to bubble, possibly bubble in more than one dot on the Scantron. All right. So work out your answer and then type in the... A, B, C, D, E, A, B, A, C, A, D, A, E, or B, C for the numeric part. This is just the whole number part. We're going to do the tenths part next. Yeah, we're, we're going to use two multiple choice questions here to, to answer the numeric question. Yeah, but I only want the numeric part, the, the whole number part. So if it's 9.4, just type in AE for 9. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you don't, put the, you don't put the whole number. You type in a letter, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, A, C, A, D, A, E, or B, C. For the whole number part. Yeah. Go ahead with the, with the hat. Yeah, the whole number part of your answer is, if it's 9.4 for your answer, the whole number part is 9. So type in AE and hit the send key. But except, but, but don't type in AE because that's not the right answer. I mean, but if it were 9.4, then you would type in AE. But you figured out it's going to be something other than, than 9. No, you don't round off. You just type in your answer to the nearest something point something, write it down, then give me the first numeral off this table, whatever it happens to be. All right, uh, 20 seconds to vote.
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Uh, raise your hand if you voted for C. All right, so that's the easy one. All right, now let's do another one. Let's do the tenth part. Okay, so the tenth part, this one you're going to have to roll them out into the doubles. So when you're doing this on a scantron, you just dark, darken in two letters. And you may not realize it, but they can grade two-letter answers if it's by design. Okay, so... Hit the refresh key if you need to and, and type start typing in here. All right. So if you're if you're so you all know that the, the whole number part is three. All right. So we got that. C. Now if if the tenth part is zero point eight, then you would type in A D. All right. But hopefully you you know that that's not the right. Yeah, so the, the decimal is understood. Okay, so just give me the... So actually, this should be 0.1 Newton, 0.2 Newton. So. Okay, 30 seconds to vote. Raise your hand if you're a computer science major. I know there's a few in here. You know what we're doing? This is kind of okay. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Uh, let's see what you guys voted for. Uh, very good. AE is the answer. So that's how you darken in the, the second line of the scantron. So like I said, you know, we'll have, and, and we might have more than one calculation if, if I decide I like these, uh, but they'll work like this. So, so digits from, uh, numerals from six through zero, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero, you'll be darkening two dots. And it's possible for me on the answer key to indicate, um, uh, you know, grade both dots. You have to have it right for both dots. Uh, so uh, this is this is good. Now I want to go over with you some stuff about terminal velocity, and we're going to do some document cam work uh, for that. Uh, so let me pause the podcast for. Okay, so with, with terminal velocity, the main thing is that the force is proportional to V squared. So the little formula I wrote at the beginning, F equals B times V squared, that's in the textbook. The, but they, they use the lowercase b to encode a whole bunch of other constants, like the density of the air, the mass of the object, and the amount of area facing into the wind, basically, uh, and a, I think a couple other things in there. You could read all about that. Now, when I say the area facing the wind, here's what I want you to think about. 
when you jump out of an airplane or if you're watching a movie, you know, with, you know, sometimes these, these sequences that they film for, for a movie, you know, they, they almost make you puke if you're watching it in a movie theater to watch some of the jumps and stuff. But you may have noticed that, you know, they go into a spread eagle with their, you know, like they belly flop towards the earth. And they do that, but, you know, they, they, also, they, they also adjust their arms, and, you know, kind of move sideways, and they form these big groups, you know, where they all link together in a ring and stuff like that. And raise your hand if you've done skydiving and done that formation flying. So when you do that, you usually spread eagle, right? All right. But if, if somebody jumps out, real, but sometimes they have really big groups. So the people, are the, the, big, the, the last people in the group, you know, the outer part of the formation, they're going to bail out last. Okay, so they got to catch up. So everybody else is down, you know, down, you know, a thousand feet or more. So they got to catch up. So what they do is uh, they, go, they, t they go into a tuck. Okay, so they make their body... Um, uh, present less area to the wind. And what that does is it's, it increases, it, it decreases the drag, okay? And therefore it increases terminal velocity. So that means when they get to terminal velocity, they're still going faster than everybody that's out in spread eagle in, in, you know, in, in formation. So then when they get down there, they try to slow down, you know, they go into spread eagles. Did you ever have to do that? Go into a tuck and then, Right. So the most experienced guy is the one that comes out last. And he, yeah. Yeah, the guy that's hooking everybody up and then the guy that's following up to shepherd everybody along. Yeah, so um, so that's so in terminal velocity you have all kinds of things like that. Here's another example. I mentioned the A ten Warhog, a fine airplane. But I you know, I've been reading this book, uh, Hidden Figures about Katherine Johnson et al. And shh, shh, we're almost done. The research facility that she was in up in Virginia, Langley, NASA Langley, they were first started in World War I to make airplanes more efficient by studying drag. And they, the, if you've ever read up any about the, uh, the fighter planes of World War II, you know that the P-51 Mustang was this excellent airplane that had enormous range, carrying lots of load and lots of uh, payload. They escorted bombers into Germany and back. Um, and P-51 was perfected at that same uh, research facility by studying the drag. And they have big wind tunnels down there to this day. All right, let's dismiss and come on down for a few minutes if you want to chat about anything. And uh, I'll see you on Friday, and we'll do a lot of problems on Friday.